Welcome to Life Church of Orange, where we like to praise and worship our God, right? Come on, let's set our hearts, prepare our hearts to worship our God, our Savior, our living King. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. God is in control, right? God is in control. Psalm 75, 3. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who hold its pillars firm. Our God is in control. And Hebrews 12, 28 says, Therefore, because of that, therefore, let us be thankful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And let us offer to God the acceptable worship and let's reverence him and give him awe. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this. We bless you, Lord. Let's worship him and reverence him this morning. Thank you, Lord.
again. Thank you, Lord. Come on, God is our home. singing this song, church, the Word of God says, 1 Thessalonians 5.8, it says, but let us who are of the day be sober. It says, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and then it says, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So it's talking about this thing up here, our thoughts, our perspective, that we are to have as a helmet the hope of salvation. 
the hope of our future. You have hope in you that God is a God of all hope. And so when we're singing, he keeps hope alive, that God keeps hope alive. Well, it's also understanding that we are meditating on his hope that we have about us. The word of God says that we are, we are to have about us as a helmet, the hope of salvation, the hope of you believed, you, you were saved when you believed, but also in the, right now in the process, you're being saved, God, you're learning how to be sanctified in God because maybe right now you might be saying, man, yeah, I believe in Jesus and I know I'm saved, but man, I'm having a tough time in this life. Well, you know what? That's okay because you're being sanctified. That's the sanctification process that God is doing in you. So you're wearing it like a helmet. You're keeping it over your mind, right? Hope, hope. God is keeping that hope alive, but we have around us like a helmet, hope in him, the hope of salvation. And then one day, church, one day Jesus is going to come back and we're going to be glorified and that we're going to see the fullness of his salvation come to pass. You're going to see the fullness of what God is doing and we will see his return and that'll be the completion of all things. But right now in the waiting, right now, church, you're in the waiting. So we come and we say, Lord, thank you that you keep hope alive. Thank you, Lord God, while I'm waiting, while we're in the waiting, while you're doing the sanctification process in me, while you're helping my mind to understand, while you're helping my mind and my heart to stay focused on you and not to be distracted or carried away by all the other cares, all the other things that are trying to come at us. Guess what? The Word of God says, put hope like a helmet over your head. Yes. What does that mean? That's protection. That's the protection of God in your life. And it's hope because you're saying, God, I don't have it all together, but you do. You have it all together, God. Right now, you might be feeling like, man, this thing looks like a mess. This thing looks like it's all just one little thing and it's all going to fall apart. But God is telling us in the word of God that uh, let us who are of the day be sober. What does that mean? It means be serious. Guess what? In God, there's going to come a day in him where we will have partake of the new wine together. And that'll be the time of joy. But right now, it's the time of being serious. Right now, it's the time of saying, okay, God, you're in this. You're with me. There's no fooling around in this, God. You're with me in this. You haven't left me aside. These aren't empty promises. It says, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. So you're putting on faith over your heart. Man, you got to protect your heart, church. We got to protect our heart with all diligence is what Proverbs says, right? We got to guard our heart. And what is that? That doesn't mean that we close ourselves off to people, but it means that we protect what we, what we hear, letting the, 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 not letting the, the things of the enemy get in there and settle in there. You know, you know those lies that try to come in and what they're trying to do is those lies are trying to settle in your heart to make your heart hard to keep you from, from, from believing the truth in God's word. So the breastplate of faith, we put it on. We say, Lord, I trust in you. I'm guarded by you, Lord God. I'm guarded in faith by you. And love the agape of God, the thing that we so very need the most, church. The greatest of all the things is the love of God. And with all of that, church, we have hope as a helmet. We have the hope of salvation as a helmet over our head, church. You know, I just heard as we were worshiping God, I heard the Lord saying, remind people, remind the church family, remind the people of God to put hope as a helmet over them. That's protection from the living God. That don't just be absorbing all the pains. Don't just be absorbing all the letdowns and all the frustrations. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't let that rejection settle. Don't let those words that you've been thinking about, somebody told you, don't let that settle in your mind. But put on hope as a helmet, the hope of salvation, that God is working things out in your life right now. He's sanctifying you right now. There's going to be glory that's going to come one day, and you're going to be in that also. God has saved you. He's done it. So we are to believe, but we are to have hope in this hour. Amen? Can we have hope, church? Can we have hope? When we sing it, can we do that one more time? You keep hope alive one more time. Just, just that, that chorus of it or whatever that is, the phrase of it. 
and let's just sing it. And right now, church, just believe by faith. Yeah, right, when you're singing that, you're putting hope as a helmet. You're putting hope, the hope of salvation. It's a helmet over your mind, faith over your heart, the love of God. He's doing it in you, church. Let us believe him, amen.
restore the healing of all disease and I sing praises I sing praises I give you honor worthy Jesus come on praise and we give you praise and all of the honor you are our God the one we live for we give you praise and all of the glory God we give you love and we give you praise and all of the honor you are our God the one we
Shout Jesus from the mountain. Yes. Jesus in the street. Yes. Jesus in the darkness over yes. every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name God, it only comes by Jesus. It only comes by the Spirit. And it comes by our faith. Because if we don't believe, how's it supposed to happen? And if we believe that there is power in His name, like we're singing, then we're going to see stuff happen. Jesus wants the Spirit of God to be poured out on us and for us to operate in those giftings into the pouring out of the Holy Spirit into the miraculous words of knowledge, healing, cancer healed in the name of Jesus, bodies healed in the name of Jesus. But if we don't believe, the Bible says, how would that man that doubts suppose that he'd receive anything from the Lord? So we got to believe this stuff. So right now, can we just start praying? Can we just pray by the Spirit? Lord God, I just command cancer to die in the name of Jesus. I command cancer to die in the name of Jesus. Sight to the blind in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that there would be words of knowledge in the name of Jesus that there would be a faith, that there would be a stirring right now in the name of Jesus so that it would build inside of us, oh God. That we would move by your spirit, move by your presence. That we would do the things that Jesus did when he walked this earth. Oh, because it says that we will do greater things. But if we don't believe that, how's it supposed to happen? So God, I just declare it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for Becky Leal, Lord God, healing her body, Lord God. Just as Jordan started praying, Lord God, as you're directing him, God, we, we by faith, God, we as a family, we agree for Becky Leal, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're touching her body in Jesus' name. For, for Wanda Curtis, Lord God, we agree, Lord, for healing throughout her body, healing. Lord, we rebuke cancer. We rebuke cancer in Wanda's body. We rebuke cancer in Becky Leal's body. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church, pray with me. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come together and we agree. Lord God, according to your word, according to what you say, Lord God, we believe 
and agree, Lord, in Jesus' name, together as your people, God, we pray. We're asking, Lord, we're lifting our sisters to you in the name of Jesus. Surely, Lord God, you are able. Surely, Lord God, you are able to heal. You are mighty to save, Lord God. You are able to do, Lord God. You are able to deliver. Lord, you say in your word, heal me and I will be healed, Lord God. Save me and I'll be saved. Heal me and I'll be healed, Lord God, is what Jeremiah tells us. So, Lord, we believe your word. We believe your word, Lord God. We believe your word. We believe God's word. Amen, church? We believe the word of God. We believe the word of God. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Church, I want to read to you here what 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 tells us. I want you to hear me. Hear what I'm saying here and... and Though, as though it's just you and Jesus in this place. It's just you and the Lord Jesus. The Word of God says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. God's gifts of grace. The Word of God, 1 Corinthians 12, it says that His gifts his manifestation, right? You know what that means? Where it's happening, where God's gifts occur. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. You're each one, right? Amen? You're each one, all of us here. But it says, for the profit of all, to bless everyone here. God gives you these gifts, these spiritual gifts, the manifestation of the Spirit. It's not you doing it. It's power, Holy Spirit power, infused power inside of you. God working in you for the profit of everyone else here. So you might be saying, oh, oh, wow, oh, that's great, but... I could never step out in that. Remember, just think of it, just you and Jesus in this room, nobody else here. Just you and Jesus, he's talking to you right now. Will we believe for the manifestation of the Spirit? Because the Bible says, this is not man, It's not me saying this. It's not me saying this because I want to stir something up. I know there's been a lot of error in the church. I know there's been a lot of wrong motives. But I'm reading to you here from the Word of God. It says, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one, given to each of you, to all who believe. If you believe in Jesus... And how you know you have the Holy Spirit is because if you can say that Jesus is Lord sincerely from your heart, if you can say that Jesus is Lord, you can only do that by the Holy Spirit. No one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. Understand that. If you can't say Jesus is Lord, well, hey, we can pray for you. We can help with that. But I'm saying this to you by faith. I'm saying this to encourage you. Because you might be hearing what I'm saying and you might be going, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Uh-uh, this is scary. What are you talking about here? I'm reading to you the word of God. I'm reading to you the love of God. I'm reading to you how the church is to interact with each other. Yes, we're to fellowship and love and walk in love with each other and forgiveness and unity and mercy, absolutely. But part of, how, part of that bonding, part of that bonding as we grow in one another is by the manifestation of the Spirit in each of us because it's given to each one for the profit of all. 
So it says, for one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, through Holy Spirit, to another the word of knowledge, through the same Spirit, another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But it says, but one and the same Spirit works all these things. Holy Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So what does that mean? So God is here with us. When the worship team opened up this morning, we were singing, God is here. God is here. How does it go? He's faithful. How does the words go? He is able, right? He's faithful. God is here. And we're singing it. You know what Jesus says? When two or three are gathered together, there I am. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. But we need to use these gifts that he's given. Guess what? He came in this morning and he was distributing gifts. He was passing them out. So my responsibility as a follower of Christ is either I'm going to receive what he gave me or I'm going to reject it because I'm afraid because I don't understand, because I'm being fearful, because what are people going to think of me? Oh, there's cameras on. People are watching this online. The man that we lost it. Well, if I wasn't reading to you the word of God, then yes, I would agree. But I'm reading to you the word of God. Guess what? I'm here. Believe me that I like things decent and in order. I like things too decent and in order. So that means I can hinder things. You hear me? So it's safe. But understand, God wants us to step out in these things. God wants us to step out in these things. Becky, you got something? Sharon and Ed, I um, have a sense that God's doing something right now with the both of you. Amen. Amen. Just receive. Just lift your hands and receive. Father God, I pray that you baptize them in your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father God, that you are with them, that you flood them with your spirit because I, I just have this sense that you both are just are pushing and crying out to the Lord. And I just, just, just receive whatever God has for you right now as Pastor Gabe lays his hands upon you. Father God, fill them with your spirit and do what you want to do inside of them. Fill them with your spirit, oh God. Fill them with your spirit, oh God, that they would let go of anything that would hold them back, that they would let go, Father God, and release anything, Father God. Release it all, release it all. There's no questioning, no questioning why, no questioning, but just release it and let it go and baptize them and fill them with your spirit, oh Father God. Fill them with your spirit, oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Give them more. Give them more, Father God. Give them more, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Just pray for them. Let's worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just work inside of them right now, Lord. We pray for them. Work inside of them right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. you father god we thank you jesus we bless you father god we thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah delight yourself in him and he's going to give you all those desires delight yourself in him I believe you have great desires. Thank you, Jesus. Do it inside of Sharon and Ed, Lord God. Do it. All that they're asking for, all that they desire, Father God. And more. Because you know what? We serve a good God, 
a good father and he wants to give you more. Just like we want to give good things to our children. We want to bless our children. How much more does our heavenly father want to bless us? How much more? His love is pure. Ours, not so much. Sometimes our love is not pure. But the love of the Father is pure and holy. And He loves you like you love your children, but more. More than we can even comprehend. He loves you. He loves Sharon. He loves Ed. Thank you, Lord. You know, Sharon, just as Susan was praying there, heard a couple of things. One, the Lord says, know that I'm working in your family. Be at peace. I'm working in your family. I have this, says the Lord. I'm doing my work. You just keep trusting me. Amen. But I saw something else. <clears throat> I saw what looked like like a garage. And I saw you you were busy working, but you were working behind the garage. Everybody else was in the front. And you've had this thing in your heart, well, I have to be the one working behind. I have to be the one doing all these things back here. But God says, my daughter, I want you to understand that I've chosen you. I called you long ago. It was you that I was calling was you that I said, you, Sharon, you're not just some random number out there, but it's you that I've called by name. He says, you're mine. He says, I'm with you. And I've made you able for the task at hand. Because you may have said, well, it's for somebody else and not for me. It's for another, and I just have to be busy about this. I'm just going to make myself busy over here. And those greater things of God, you said that's for somebody else, that somebody else will take care of that. And God is saying, no, my daughter, it's your heart that I want. It's that humble heart that I'm looking for. Because that's the heart that I can use. That's the heart that will represent me to the lost. That's the heart. I put that in you. I made you this way. But there have been words that have been spoken against you where you thought you had to go in the back. You had to be behind, hidden away. No one could see you. But the Lord is saying to you, my daughter, I want you to come out. Come out of the shed. Come out from behind those hidden areas. Not that you were doing anything wrong. You just thought that that's where you needed to be. But God is saying, I'm, I'm wanting you in the front because I gave you that heart so that way you'd be able to love people the way I love people. And I see you being a helping hand. I see you helping the needy. I see you helping the brokenhearted. I see you helping the downcast. That God wants to use you to help a society. Does that make sense to you? That's okay. But I hear God saying that he's going to be renewing how you see yourself.
God's going to be putting in a greater confidence in you. Confidence in God, not a boastful, prideful thing. That's not who you are. But the Lord is going to reveal to you that that heart that he gave you, that sensitivity where you're burdened for those that others don't care about, that God gave that to you. And he's going to expand that. He's going to mature that in a way that you never knew before. As he's growing you, he's going to mature this heart in you to be able to show the, the, the hand of God, the help of God to those that are weak, to those that are looking to God for help. Amen? Father, I just thank you for sharing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, for, for Ed and Sharon both, Lord, why you're wanting to have them strengthened in your gifts, Lord God, is to be able to take this, Lord, into the highways and the byways. Lord, like the good Samaritan who came and, and, and gave of his own resource and he bandaged up and he brought oil. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. Lord, that you want them to bring the power of God to people's lives while also ministering to their, their physical needs, Lord God. So, Lord, I pray that you raise them up, strengthen them, Lord God. Strengthen Sharon in this, Lord God. Let her see in a new light, Lord God, who you've called her to be. Lord, your daughter, not the one that's in the, behind working in the, in the back areas, Lord God, but that, God, you're bringing her to the front because of a humble heart that you've given her to be able to love people the way you want to love people, the way you love people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Tina, I hear the Lord say, I've heard your cry. He hears. And he wants to fill the dark places the shadows and fill them and that he's coming to answer you he's coming to fill you he's coming to renew you and he sees it and he's working inside of you and what may seem silent is not silent but that he's working and he's producing more he's producing more inside of you than you could even imagine and he's doing that work and he wants to do a complete work yes. that you would allow him to do that complete work and I thank you Father God right now that you are shining upon the dark places and the shadows and the things the sorrows yes. and the, the yes. discouragements Father God that have come against yes. Tina Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are working in that way, that you're bringing a light to these things, Father God, yes, that it. you're bringing that light, Father God, to shine, to shine, that she's going to shine brighter, that she's going to grow. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your move. Yes. Thank you for your move in her life yes, right God. now. We thank, thank you, God. Father, for touching her right now, yes, God. for healing every wound, for replacing old thoughts. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And um, the friend that's next to Tina, the only thing I, I heard was just God wants to give you more. And I heard you saying, what do you want? I heard him asking you, what do you want? And he wants to give you more and fill you more and fill you more and fill you more and give you more and give you more. Fill her with your presence, oh Father God. Fill her with your presence, oh Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tina, would it be okay if we asked you to come forward? We just pray for you. And and what, what I want to do is this. Because the word of God tells us that we're to understand the significance of laying on of hands. There's there's several aspects of that. And so what Becky just prayed over you, 
Because what I saw over you is I saw the light of God. So, and Becky, could you come down here also, please? So we want to lay hands on you, Susan. And, and here's what I hear in, in agreement with what Becky was sharing and imparting to you. Because the Lord says, he has heard your cry. Right? That was the word, that God has heard your prayer. But what I hear is this, and it goes in line with what Becky was saying. I saw the light of God coming over you. And the light of God is very offensive to darkness. And it makes the darkness move back further and further away from the light. But God says to you, my daughter, I've given you a heart for truth. So don't compromise because you're afraid of losing something. Don't compromise the truth. Walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. And know that the Lord will bring all those things together. You won't lose. But all those things that you desire will come together stronger than ever before. But the Lord says, but I'm purposing for you. Stand up in this hour. Stand up in the truth. Let the light of God. And that's what we're going to pray. We're going to pray an impartation. by the Spirit of God that God's going to reveal to you His truth more and more by the Word of God. The Word of God becoming bigger and bigger in your heart. Because what's going to happen is God is going to start exchanging your thoughts for His thoughts. As you begin to seek the Lord, you begin to take in the Word of God and the Holy Spirit's going to help you to understand more and more and the light, I'm sorry, the light is going to grow. It's going to become like bigger around you. So at first, there's going to be some people that aren't going to like this. And they're going to say, I'm intimidated around you, Tina. But the love of God will balance all those things out. But don't cause you to compromise. Don't let that cause you to compromise. Amen. Does that make sense? Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for our sister. Lord, we just impart right now. We just impart right now encouragement by the word of God. Lord, your light. The light of your truth by your word. Lord, growing in our sister in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and that you will strengthen her. Holy Spirit, you will strengthen her. Lord God, that she will not compromise. She will not compromise in standing for you. But God, she knows that your strength is with her. Your power is with her, Lord God. And even the enemy would try to come and lie to her and say, no, that's not what's happening. No, no, that's just, that's imagination. No, trying to bring defeat. But we speak against that in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you are doing a work in her now. You are performing a work in her. Lord, you're manifesting your spirit in her, your strength in her, Lord God. The light of God growing around her, that the darkness would begin to flee, that the things of darkness, and Lord, as she walks in your truth, Lord, she's going to see things that were problems before become easier. Things that were in opposition to her because they were darkness. Lord, you're going to give her wisdom and understanding, Lord God. And she's going to speak your word and stand on your word and pray according to your word. And that darkness is going to flee. And problems that were, that were so difficult before are just going to fall apart and fade away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
Would you bless the Lord, church? Would you give God, just bless him, thank him for his goodness. Lord, we thank you that you love us. Thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness to us each day. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In this place, church, let us prepare to receive communion. You know, there's a powerful passage in Scripture for us in the Word of God. Hebrews 10, 17. We love you, Tina. Hebrews 10, 17, it says, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. That's what God says. This is a promise of God. Because what does the enemy try to do? The enemy tries to remind, remind you of your past. Especially when it comes to this place of communion. Something that Jesus desired for us to enter into and to, to feel welcomed in and received. And there are some people, when we come to, it comes to communion, they don't want to engage in it because the first thing that's happening is the enemy is reminding them of their past. But here's the word of God, church. Here's the word of God. Hebrews 10, 17. He says, their sins and their lawless deeds. Not only, not only does he not remember our sins, church, but he doesn't remember our foolishness either. Thank you, Lord. He doesn't remember our, maybe, maybe there's some things of where you've had to really believe in faith for some things that just some shame that maybe were by your own choice. May not have been because of somebody else, but because of your own choice. And you say, okay, God, I know you forgive me of my sins, but what about that nonsense? My own failings understand that God is greater than even our lawless deeds, church. And that he even says to those things, I don't remember them. Because he loves you. Because you've come before him, you've said, Lord, forgive me. That right there alone, that sincerity, of heart that just says, Lord, forgive me. You know, the Father's heart, his response to you is, yes, I forgive you. And you might say, but man, I've got some lawless deeds, some things that are just ridiculous. The Father says, I, I don't remember them. Jesus says, I don't remember them. So that means we need to get a new mind on that. That we need to say, Lord, if you don't remember these, then why am I remembering these? Why am I continually staying? So the Lord says to that person, it's time to get a new heart. So when you come before in faith, the Lord's table today. We come in this place of faith where we say, we say, Lord, give us a heart that knows you forgave us. Jesus, give me a new heart that knows you've forgiven me, that knows not only have you, do you not remember my sin, but Lord, you don't remember my lawless deeds. And I'm washed in your blood. So would you take the body in all sincerity of heart and thank Jesus that he paid the price. The body represents the price that we could never pay for our sin. 
Just break it as he said and eat it. And the cup representing the blood of Jesus. The blood that says we're clean, the blood that says we're bought, the blood that says we belong as family to the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that cleanses us of all our sin. Would you thank him and drink? And Lord, we do this in remembrance of you. We do this in remembrance of you, Lord God. You we remember what you've done, but you forgot. You don't remember our lawless deeds. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 If you agree, say amen. And thank you for your goodness, Lord, to us. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Well, welcome this morning. God bless you all. We're glad that we can be together in God's house. I'm glad. I'm glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. All right, I was glad that it was Sunday morning. It was the, the Lord's day. Right? Sunday. Come on. It's the Lord's day. All right? We, maybe in English we mess it up, but in other languages they know. Spanish, domingo. All right? The, the day of the Lord, the Lord's day. Why? Because Sunday was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. That's why. That's why the Word of God calls it the first day of the week. History, culture, society was changed when Jesus rose from the grave, and he rose on a Sunday. Guess what? Sunday doesn't even matter in the Old Testament. Sunday wasn't an important, it wasn't a significant day in the Old Testament. What was a significant day? Saturday, the Sabbath, Friday night until Saturday night. If that doesn't help us understand, just that alone is the proof of Christ's resurrection. It impacted the whole world. There may be people that deny Christ, but it's because they're in deception. But all of society was impacted. Why the first day of the week is the first day of the week? Why the year is 2023? Because it's the measurement of when Christ rose from the dead. When Christ was born, actually, is, is what the time frame is of. Yeah, maybe a couple of years off, but that's the significance of it, is our measurement is based on Christ. The year of our Lord, 2023. Sunday, the Lord's Day. I don't know why I'm saying this, but it's just important to understand. It's good that we can be in God's house on the first day of the week. We're blessed. God is good. Amen. All right. Hey, uh, let's receive our, our tithes and offerings at this time. Yeah, amen. God is so good. You know, uh, let me read this. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him, those who revere him, those who honor him him, and especially in our giving, uh, as we honor God in our giving. I, I want to share with you, so last week, the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about, you know, needing our storehouse to be filled. And, you know, God is faithful. God is faithful. We, we needed about $7,000 uh, to cover all of our bills. And guess what? God provided, and God provided more than that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I want to say to you, church family, thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. Thank you for, your, for being faithful. Because God does indeed use a faithful people. I, I've said before, God doesn't need our money. That's right. He doesn't. But God wants to use people whose hearts belong to him. Whose hearts are his. Those are the ones the Word of God tells us that he fully supports. 
The eyes of the Lord search to and fro throughout the earth, looking for those whose hearts are his, that he might strongly support them. And so God uses a faithful people, and God will bless you. Thank you for your giving. Thank you. You know, it, I've said this before. It's hard for me to come and ask. It's not easy. It's not an easy thing. But I know that I must do it. It's not that I want to take all service or anything like that either. Sometimes money can be a difficult thing. Money can be a thing that, that people can immediately, you know, close off. Right? I start coming up here asking about the tithes and offerings. And people, whoop. Look at the ceiling. Look at all the lights. But then also it's that point of where the Spirit of God can talk to us. But I'm coming here saying thank you, church. Thank you for your continued love and support for your generous giving. God shows his faithfulness. But I also want to encourage us, let us continue to give, to give our part. Let us continue in that and let's keep the storehouse full. Amen. As everyone does their part, the storehouse remains full. I know things come up. Susan and I, we have a family. We have children. We understand there's expenses. We get it. We go to the grocery store that you go to. Right? We buy gas too. We see it. Expenses are up. But even in that, we know that God has called us according to his word, to be faithful to what he has said. We do our part, God does his part. So let's continue to do our part. And God, we know he will continue to do his part. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you that you are our provider. Thank you that you love us. Lord, we're your children. You're tender and compassionate to us, Lord God, and you always make a way. And Father, I, I give with thanksgiving, Lord, we thank you for your provision Thank you that you use a faithful people to show your faithfulness, Lord God. And uh, so blessing over the family, Lord. I'm asking for your blessing over each one that you provide back, that you multiply back the seed that was sown in faith to them, Lord God, as they have shown generosity to you, to your house, and to, to, uh, to all of us here, Lord God, that we, we can enjoy to be together. And so, Lord, we thank you. We trust you in all these things. In Jesus' name, A. Amen and amen. Praise God. You know, just a couple of announcements. We want to release the children. We're staying in. If there's, okay, if there's children here, we'll release them, but uh, we're staying in for now. Um, so I'm asking, I mentioned this a couple of weeks back, but I, I want to just remind um, next week, beginning Tuesday, September 20th through the 24th, not this coming week, but the following week, uh, we're going to open up the church again uh, for a week of prayer and fasting. Uh, so I'm asking your involvement again. Um, what, what are the needs? The needs are we're seeking for a move of God. The needs are we're asking for Becky Leal's healing. We're asking for uh, Wanda Curtis's healing. There, there is a need. There's a need. But it's not necessarily for a need for self, but there's a need for others that God would teach us and understand how to in intercede more and more as a people of God, that we would ask for this society, that we come together to pray for Orange, that we come to pray for Orange County, that we come to pray for Southern California, that we come to pray for California, that we come to pray for the United States, that we come to pray for the Western Hemisphere, that we come to pray that God's will would be done in the earth as it is in heaven, that we come in line with what the Spirit of God is asking us to do. Because God hears our prayers, church, that if we can grow in this and understand what 1 John 5, 15 says, it says, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask according to his will, that then we know that we, he answers our prayers. He know that we know that what we ask for, God's going to do it. And that's powerful, but it's not a one-off prayer. It's going to be understanding to be a people of God to come into his house 
and intercede. God says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So this is something that we need to be doing, church. So we're going to have the doors open, 6 to 7, starting Tuesday the 20th. Uh, why are we doing it on Tuesday and not Monday? Because we have a class going on that we've just started um, in, in some of the leading uh, men in this house. So that's, we're going to stay focused on that. But starting the 20th through the, the 26th, uh, 24th, rather, Tuesday through Saturday, every night, 6 to 7 p.m. And so we're, we're going to have the doors open to come and pray, and we're asking for your involvement. We're asking that you would come and pray with us. Jesus says when two or three are gathered together in agreement, Whatever they ask, I will do, is what Jesus says in Matthew 18. So we're coming together and doing that. Two or three coming together. We know that when two or three come together, Jesus is there. And he says, when two or three come together in agreement, he says, I'll do whatever they ask according to my will. Amen? Amen. All right, so we will do that. So, um, And then don't forget Thursday morning Bible studies for those of you available, 10 a.m. every week. You are invited to come on out. All right, let us see if we can... Uh, We'll get through here uh, Romans 12 2. Amen. Let's read here Romans 12 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's understand this life in the Spirit, a Spirit filled life, walking in the Spirit is a life that is yielded to Jesus living in his word, and what that does is that, that yields. That yields freedom. You know what I mean when I say that yield like a plant? When you, when you plant something and it grows, what does it do? A plant yields fruit. Just like a plant yields fruit, you, you water it, you give it what it needs in the ground, but then the plant just does the rest. Right? For those of you who are, maybe you know how to grow trees that bear fruit, what do you do? You, you know, you give it some of the nutrients that it needs in the ground. You give it the water that it needs. But it does the rest after that. That's God's work. Amen? Well, it's the same. It's very similar. A life in the Spirit, letting the Word of God permeate this and this, our minds and our hearts and as we do that, we start getting new thoughts in God. You start waking up, the Holy Spirit starts to give you some thoughts. And you're going, Whoa, wait, what's going on here? I'm not as mad as I used to be. I'm not angry with those people anymore. What's going on? I feel compassion for them. I've never felt compassion for them because they're jerks. What's going on, God? The Lord starts speaking to you. you start, you're starting to have mercy. The Lord starts speaking to you because you're, you're, you're yielding to Christ. You're living in his word, and freedom is happening. That freedom that you've wanted, that peace that you've been desiring, God is loosening it upon you. That pain that you used to hold on to all the time, or that pain that whenever you'd think of it, those painful thoughts would come up, all of a sudden, it's starting to fade away now don't have that pain like you used to have. You're not as hurt. That's God. That's what he does in us as we yield to him. Why is it important to yield to the word of God and the life of God and let, letting Holy Spirit do work in our lives? Because he is orchestrating things that we might not necessarily understand at first. Because God is wanting to do a work in us to mature us, to grow us, to make us like him. Real freedom is in knowing his will for my life and being able, being able to be sustained in this. Let me read to you what 2 Corinthians 3.18 says. It says, but we all, can you say all? all. With unveiled face, beholding, that means looking, beholding, looking, is in a mirror the glory of the Lord, it says, are being transformed, changed. The metamorphosis is happening. Remember like that caterpillar being turned into a completely new creature, a butterfly. We're being transformed into the same image, 
the image of Jesus, being made like the Lord from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord, or as the New King James says, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what is that telling us? That's Holy Spirit doing work in us, making us like Jesus from glory to glory. Does it mean it happens instantaneously? Not necessarily. It might be your whole life. I've said this before. I don't think the way I thought when I was in my 20s. I don't think the way I thought when I was in my 30s. I don't think the way I thought I was when I was in my 40s. I've just entered into my 50s. I'm 51. Young man. Don't let this white mustache and beard fool you. <laughs> Hard fought wisdom for making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I like to say, I may not know what to do, but I know what not to do. But we understand from the word of God, he's changing us from glory to glory. And we're sustained. We're sustained where you're at. Right where you are, God is sustaining you in that. I don't need to get ahead of God. But know that God has me right where I need to be. He has you right where you need to be. As we continue to seek him. From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Transforming us into Christ's image making us like Jesus. While the God of this age has the power to blind those who are given to it, who are surrendered to it, but the work of God in the child of God is he's making us more and more like Jesus. He's bringing us into that place, giving us truth. Now, I want you to see a transformed life is a mature life. As we come to maturity, we grow from a relationship with God that we first come to him, we might be needs-based. As we're growing in God, as we're maturing in God, a lot of times we approach him based on our need. Well, Lord, I need this to happen. Lord, I need this. God, would you give me this? Would you give me that? Now, and, and don't misunderstand me. Jesus teaches us to pray, to ask the Lord to provide. Amen? He says, give us this day our daily bread. Because God wants us indeed to be dependent upon him. Yes, yes, and amen. He doesn't want us to be independent of him. But God does want to mature us from being needs-based to being his will-based. Let me say that again. God is looking for us to grow and mature, not from living a life of relating to him by, by needs. God, meet my needs. You meet my needs, and I'm happy. God's with me. He met my need to mature to where our heart starts to say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, help me to grow in your will. I want your will to be done, Lord God. I know that if your will is being done, then I'm right where I need to be. Lord, if I'm in your will, then that's the place that I want to be. Does that make sense? So it's maturing. There's nothing wrong with praying for needs. Understand me. We know Hebrews 4, 16 tells us, let us boldly come before the throne of grace to, to receive mercy and to find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen? Just because you're maturing doesn't mean you're not going to have needs. But what I'm talking about is where we're only needs-based. Like a child child to a parent, how, how do they approach a child? A baby needs things, right? Baby needs a bottle. Baby needs diaper change. Baby needs love. Those are all important things. If you didn't change that baby's diaper, you're a bad parent. If you didn't feed your baby, you're a bad parent. If you didn't love your baby, you're a bad parent. Uh, somebody listen to me. 
So it doesn't mean that just as we're, it, but it, it doesn't mean that we're in the wrong when we're asking God for needs. I want to make sure that that's clear. I want to make sure that that's clear. Because I don't want you to get a wrong thought about God. But I'm, I'm talking about mature things here. How we know we're maturing is we start to say, Lord, I want your will to be done. I want your will to be done in my life. So how do I know the will of God for my life? Well, Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, first present your body to God. It says your body is the temple, right? We, we know that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit according to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And Jesus paid a great price in his body, in his blood, and therefore we're no longer, we no longer belong to ourselves. He paid a, a great price for us. Amen? But God is looking for us to give our bodies to him, heart, mind, soul, strength, to yield ourselves to him. And God has made the body of Christ a kingdom of priests to God. I'm going to show you here this in the word of God. Our body is to be a living sacrifice yielded to God under the control of the Holy Spirit. Our priestly worship is to present our bodies. Again, heart, mind, soul, strength to God. Transformed in mind to the Spirit of God who is working in us. No longer being conformed to where the Spirit of this age has nothing upon us. What did Jesus say? He says, the devil has nothing on me. He knew that the devil had come, but he said he has nothing on me. God is looking for us to grow in this way also. And in so doing, we will fulfill the most important thing in the universe. God's will. Why is it the most important thing? Because it is what, in, in the scope of all history, in all the universe, God's will is the one thing that is going to be done. Everything happens according to God's will. Nothing happens outside of God's will. Amen? So let me read you this. Romans 8, 29, 30, out of the New Living, New Living Translation. It details for us God's complete plan for a believer in Christ. It says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And that word firstborn, it doesn't mean like birth. It means preeminence. It means that he would be the leader. That he has preeminence among many brothers and sisters. And who are the brothers and sisters? Us. That's us. Does that mean that that changes who Jesus is? No. He's still God. But that's, we share his glory. That, that's what Jesus has done for us. We get to share in his glory. And having chosen them, the word of God says, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. When the Lord returns and we're with the Lord in eternity, this will all come to fruition. We'll see this all clear. This will all be made certain. And we'll understand that God was wanting to make us and mature us, make us like Jesus. That was his plan. We may have different ways of getting there, but that's going to be, ultimately, we're all going to be like Jesus. God is making us, maturing us, and growing us to become like him in, in maturity. Amen? So what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? First of all, it is not three separate wills of God. There's, there's not a good will of God, and then an acceptable will of God, and then a perfect will of God. No. There's one will of God. A good will of God, because what that basically says is then I'm trying to make God's will bend to what I want. I'm going to do things my way. Well, that, I'm not doing anything bad, so that's a good will of God. Well, may not make God happy, but it's acceptable. And then the perfect will of God. No, no, there are not three wills of God, church. There's a teaching out there. It's false. It's false. There's not a good will. There's not an acceptable, acceptable will. And then a perfect will. Of, no, 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 no. 
That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible never teaches that. They're taking Romans 12, 2 out of context when they teach that. Go look in the Word of God. You're not going to go find any other passage that says there's a good will and an acceptable will and a perfect will. No, it doesn't exist. There might be people that are living maybe in carnality and God is patient with them. But Revelation tells us that God is patient with Jezebel for a season. We don't want to be Jezebel. Am I talking to anybody here? Okay, just make sure. Got quiet. The Bible is teaching us that God's will for our lives is good. God's will for, for your life and for my life is good. God's will for your life and my life is acceptable. What about when you're going through a real difficult time? This is not acceptable, God. I don't like where I'm at right now, God. But see, that's where the Lord and the Spirit of God is doing his work from glory to glory. And God's will for us, church, is perfect. It's complete. So that means that it's us yielding. What did John the Baptist say? Right? Less of me, more of you. I must decrease, he must increase. What does Jesus say to the Father in the garden? Not my will, but your will be done. But I thought Jesus and the Father are one. Yes, they are. But he was saying, Father, your will is the most important thing. He said, Father, I yield to you. Because he was doing that for us as an example. That we would have that heart to say, Lord, I yield my will. But Lord, I want to do things my way. I want to do it this way. Nope, his will is good, acceptable, and perfect. Well, what if you don't feel like God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect? What do we do with that? Will we acknowledge that we're false? Will I acknowledge that I'm false? That God's ways are true and my ways are not? These aren't easy things, church. But it's a mature heart that's going to say, Lord, let your will be done. That's how God, you may have gone through difficult things in your life. And you're saying, God, why did that happen? That didn't seem good, acceptable, or perfect to me. Now, God is big enough to hear that, church. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't stop there. But that's where we come back another time and say, Lord, help me to understand. Help me to mature. Make me like you, Jesus. Help me to say, not my will, but your will be done. Right. Amen. Amen. There are some examples of what the Word of God tells us about His will. There are many, but I'm just going to cite a few. Matthew 6, 9 through 10, Jesus says, In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Right When we come to pray to God, it's worshipful. It's on the principle of worship. Hallowing God is on the principle of worship. And he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of the most important aspects of our prayer is that we pray, God, your will. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will. When I see violent crimes and awful things happen, that's where I pray, Lord, your will. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That there's a lie going on there. There's a, there's a false thing going on there. But Lord, let your will be done. Because our prayers are powerful. Our prayers are powerful. Our prayers can turn the world upside down, church. 
the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people does much good. That we can pray like Elijah prayed. God hears your prayers. That's how powerful the prayers of a follower of Jesus Christ are. If we will just believe. If we will just be renewed in our thinking. If we will just understand the place that God has given you. If you will just understand the place that God has called each of us to, the important role that you have to play in this life every day as a child of God. We know that the Holy Spirit is praying for us according to the will of God. We read previously in Romans 8, verse 27, it says, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Holy Spirit is praying for you according to the will of God. He's praying what God's will over your life. Because that's the most important thing. So you can be assured as a believer Holy Spirit inside of you. He's praying for you. According to the will of God, he's praying God's will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're praying God's will over my life. Holy Spirit, thank you that you're praying your will over my life today. You're praying according to the will of God in me. Amen? So God's will is to honor him with our bodies, living holy before him. 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, verses 3 through 4 out of the New Living Translation say, God says, God's will is for you to be holy. What does that mean? Set apart to God. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor. Why does the Bible make such a big deal of sexual sin? Word of God tells us because sexual sin is one of the sins that you sin against yourself. Many of the other sins, lying, stealing, you do that to somebody else. But sexual sin, you do damage to yourself. In the moment, you may feel gratified. But it's what happens later. It's the damage that happens later, the unforeseen damage that we don't realize is going to happen. And it's not until we're older and we go, man, the pain, the guilt, the oppression. Sometimes, many times, the doorway. Uh, opening to Satan. So many things in that. So God calls us. His will is that we live holy and that we, he's given us the power, Holy Spirit power to control our bodies. Fruit of the Spirit, amen? Yeah. Self-control. He's given us power. It's not that we're weak or unable to, but are we yielded? Will we be yielded? And it's a choice, and it's a submission, and it's saying, I'm going to pray and yield to God. For some, growing in prayer is the key to all that. Hear what I'm saying by the Spirit, church. So not only are we empowered by Holy Spirit with life, so that we have self-control over our body's passions, but we're also called to live both a holy and honorable life before God and mankind. Just as the Lord Jesus came to do the will of God as we grow in maturity, we understand more and more this life is not about pleasing ourselves, but about growing and learning and seeking to do the will of God. See, I believe as we understand that more and more, as we understand that we're called to do the will of God, it's going to change how we come to church. It's going to change how we, we worship God. It's going to change how we pray. 
It's going to change how we love each other. It's going to change how we understand what God is doing in the earth. It's going to change how we seek the Lord. It's going to change how we understand God desires us to pray. It's going to un- change how we understand that there are lost going to hell and need to hear the word of God. So in light of what we previously read in Romans 8, 29, let us consider what Romans 12, 1 through 2 is informing us. I'm going to read this again, and I want to compare it with Hebrews 10. But it says, I beseech or I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So, so just look at that for a moment here. Do we have uh, one also that we can put up there? Romans 12, 1? No? Okay. If you have your Bibles, just read it there. But, but here on this, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, presenting your bodies a living sacrifice. So we come before God. We bring our bodies, a living sacrifice before God, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So see yourself as a priest before God. When you look at Romans 12, 1, see yourself as a priest before the living God. Picture in your, your mind the Old Testament priest. What did the high priest, what did he do? He comes to minister to God. Only the high priest had full access to God. You as a child of God, as a New Testament, New Covenant follower, you have full access to God. The priest comes before God. He's completely clean. You as a child of God, you come before God completely clean, robes of righteousness. You're white, clean, pure before God. We present our bodies, and this is our reasonable service. And then verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, so keep that in mind. Now, I want to read to you Hebrews 10, verses 5 through 10, talking about Jesus. Okay? Remember, it's us. We're to present our bodies, a living sacrifice to God, to do his will. He says here in verses 5 of Hebrews 10, Therefore... And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Jesus, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. He says, you weren't looking for bulls and rams and goats. But a body you have prepared for me. This is Jesus. This is the Son talking to the Father. I want you to see that here. This is the Son talking to the Father. He says, you have prepared, it says, but a body you have prepared for me. Jesus came in the flesh. God came in the flesh. Amen? Did he not? He says, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. And then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, the first covenant, that he may establish the second, the second covenant. What we have as Christians. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So Jesus as our high priest, what we're reading here in Hebrews chapter 10, Jesus comes as our high priest, and we're seeing a conversation that happened in eternity past where Jesus said, Father, I will come to do your will. See, there's a conversation happening in eternity past, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, And God, in his wisdom, his will is he's going to create humanity. And they're going to fall because of sin. And they're going to need a Savior. I hope this blows you away. I hope this messes up your thinking. God already knew when he created Adam and Eve that they were going to sin. God already knew He was going to have to come and die for his creation. God already knew this was all going to happen. And Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, 
three in one, have this conversation. And he's saying, I come to do your will. I submit to you, Father. You've prepared a body for me. It's going to come in the flesh. That's what he's saying. God is going to die for his creation. God is going to die for humanity. According to the will of God. Do you see that, church? And so God, what Romans 12, 1 and 2 is telling us, in, in the same comparison, Jesus is our high priest, but accordingly, as a follower of Christ, we're called as priests. What, what does Revelation tell us? What does Revelation 1, 5 and 6 say? From Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And it says, and has made us kings and priests to our God, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Revelation 5.10 says, And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. But see this, church, the translation that, that where it says made us kings and priests, that, that it's more accurate to understand that he's made us a kingdom of priests. If you read, if you have a, an English Standard Version, your Bible, Revelation 1:6 says, He's made us a kingdom, priests, kingdom, comma, priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And Revelation 5:10 out of the English Standard says, You have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. And when you see this, this supports what 1 Peter 2.9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. See, when we, when we understand who we are, we're priests to our God. We're to live a life as holy, a holy priesthood, but a royal priesthood. Because we all are like the high priest. Yes, Jesus is our high priest now. Amen? He's the real high priest now. He's praying for us. He's interceding for us. But we have the same access that the Old Testament high priest had. In the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, only the high priest could come into the Holy of Holies. Now God in Christ has made us the Holy of Holies. Holy Spirit lives inside of you. We are the Holy of Holies now. We have full access to God. The, the subordinate priests before in the Old Covenant, they didn't have that kind of access to God. What did they do? They prepared everything. They're the ones that are shining up all the dishes and the cups and everything, making it clean and preparing the bread and cleaning up the blood and cutting up animals and all these things that they had to do, that the Levitical priesthood had to do. But it was just one because you know some of the sub subordinate priests, they're all bloody from cutting up the animals. They're not clean. It's the high priest. He's clean. Guess what? That's who we are now. Because God's maturing us, making us like Jesus. That's his will. That's his plan. So when we start to see in all of this, Romans 12, 1 through 2 should make it clear God wants us to be able to discern his will. God wants us to be able to understand that God wants to mature us. And it's the mind of Christ that's going to produce a mature mind, being transformed, renewed, that we might be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in our lives. God wants us to understand this. It's the most important thing that we need to understand because it, God's will is the most important thing in the universe, church. Because God's will is going to be done. When you look at that last chapter of Revelation, and you read the, just the remarkable, amazing description, but understand it's going to happen. God's will. It's going to happen. New heaven, new earth. The throne of God is going to come upon the new earth. No one is going to say anymore, know the Lord, because everyone who is on the new earth is going to know the Lord and have relationship with God. And there are going to be many people of God who are going to travel distances to come to the temple 
where God, to come to the throne, rather, the throne of God, and we're going to have meeting times with the living God, and it's going to be amazing. But it's going to be a whole new earth, the description where there'll be no water because it's going to be so full of the glory of God. There'll be no sun because the glory of God is going to be our light. That's all going to happen. It's all going to come to pass. And there will be no more tears. There will be no more sorrow. There'll be no more hopelessness. There'll be no more anger and rage and frustration and all those things that limit. The will of God will come to pass. Right now, we're going from glory to glory. Right now, we're allowing the hope of God as I said earlier, to be like that helmet about us. But right now, we let us have confidence that God is doing his work in your life today. Can you say amen to that, church? Let's close up and pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, that you help us grow in understanding your will. Help us to understand you've called us to be a priest a priest to our God, a royal nation, a kingdom of priests. That means we're together in this. We're not alone as family. But Lord, help us to grow in understanding your will. Help us to understand to live for you, holy and set apart. Help us, Lord God, to know that your will is for us and we as we seek you lord god we're living and walking and working in your will lord bless each one here today your strength your goodness upon each one thank you that you've we've met with you today thank you that you go home with us thank you that you're with us throughout the week thank you lord god that you're there's strength for us just as we strength together lord god we have strength with you in your presence wherever we are but god thank you that we can come together as family Thank you that we have each other, the body of Christ as family, to grow together and to to strengthen and encourage one another in prayer and in fellowship, Lord. We love you. Thank you for all that you're doing in Life Church of Orange. Thank you for what you're doing in this city and in this county and in this state and in this region, Lord God. Lord, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In your name, Jesus, we pray. And if you agree, church, say Amen. 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 Well, we love you. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. Um, we'll see you Tuesday at 10 a, or Thursday at 10 a.m. for Bible study. Um, consider your part for the following week as we come together in prayer and fasting. And we hope that you can join us as many nights of the week as possible. Again, we love you. God bless you. Praise God. <laughs>